this table includes not only the formation of elements, like um, hydrogen plus hydrogen gives you diatomic hydrogen, but it also does elements, so like sulfur plus two oxygens gives you the sulfate ion. And it'll also give you compounds like what we just did with the aluminum chloride. Also know that anytime you have a pure element, the delta HF naught is always equal to zero. So anytime you have an element in its pure thermodynamically stable state, it's going to have an HF of zero. So you don't have to look those guys up. So one more thing. Hess's law allows us to calculate the delta H of the reaction for pretty much any reaction that you can possibly think of. And the way that you do that is you take the reaction and you break it apart into the formation reaction reactions for the products and the reactants and then put them all together. And remember this little sigma symbol means the sum of all of the products formations and all of the reactants formations. And yes, we have a very big example coming. So this is the example that we're going to do. To calculate the standard enthalpy change for the combustion of one mole of liquid ethanol. I'm really liking this liquid ethanol stuff, obviously. So we're going to combust some ethanol. So the formula or the reaction for ethanol is C2H5OH. Of course, if we're combusting it, that means we're reacting with some oxygen. And we are going to spit out a whole lot of heat, so we better have our final delta H. Uh, it should be negative. Um, but we're going to have some CO2 as a product and some H2O. And you take the time to balance that and you get coefficients of 1, 3, 2, and 3. Now, back on the last slide, I told you that, and hopefully you wrote this down, if not, just rewind this a little bit and write it down, that the delta H of reaction is equal to the sum of the delta HFs of the products minus the sum of the delta HFs of the reactants. And that N in front of the products and the M in front of the reactants are the molar numbers, the, the coefficients that come out in front here. So starting with these guys, and this is where you're going to have to use pages A21 to A24, and what I want you to do is work this out. Look up the delta HF of CO2. Look it up for water. Of course, for O2, it's going to be zero because that's a... Uh, pure element and then look it up for the ethanol and so when you do that uh, I'm going to write them just kind of below here from the appendix you get that the delta HF of the ethanol is negative pay attention to signs negative 238.6 oxygen of course is zero CO2 is negative 393.5 and water is negative 241.82. And these are all kilojoules. So to put them together, you take the sum of all of the products added up. So we have 2 times the carbon dioxide. So 2 times negative 393.5. Add to that the water. So 3 times the negative 241.82. That's a negative sign right there. And now we subtract the sum of the reactants. So we only have one mole of ethanol, so we're going to subtract a negative 238.6 added to three moles of oxygen, but it's zero, so it's just three times zero. So of course you wouldn't really have to write that one. And then you plug all this in and know that when you're subtracting a negative, that means you're actually adding a positive. And this is what I mean. Carefully watch the signs of delta HF. So this one works out to be, I'm going to work out each of these individually, 2 times 393.5. You get negative 787 plus 3 times 241.82 gives you negative 725.46 minus a negative means you're adding 238.6 and then this one is zero so it just goes away. So you add all this up, negative plus a negative plus a positive, and you end up with a negative 
0.9 kilojoules. And it's got this many sig figs because when you're adding things, actually, I guess that's a 0, 0.0. You look at how many decimal places are behind the decimal when you're adding or subtracting. And so that's why that one's 0 0.9. But again, on the AP exam, if you had just rounded this to 1,270 kilojoules, you would be totally fine. I think we're about done. All right, last couple of examples that I wanted us to um, work out here were just some equation writings, basically. <clears throat> so the first one is the enthalpy of the sublimation of solid calcium. So solid calcium, calcium in the solid state, sublimation means it turns directly into a gas. Look it up in the back of the book, and you get that the delta HF of formation is positive 179.3 kilojoules per mole. The heat of solution of gaseous ammonia. You get NH3, and this is gas, going to NH3 aqueous. And again, looking that up in the back of the book, you get negative 80.29 minus the reactant, which is negative 46.19. These are all coming from the back of the book, A21 to A24. And that is equal to, overall, a negative 34.10 kilojoule per mole. This is kilojoules per mole, too. Um, bond dissociation energy of hydrogen gas. So we have hydrogen gas going to elemental and not very happy hydrogen, to be perfectly honest. Put a two there to balance it out. So take our products, which is going to be two times the positive 217.97. Subtract the reactants, so the H2 is, is, the, is the, the natural version of, of hydrogen, so it's a zero. So you end up with 2 times 217, or positive 435.94 kilojoules. The heat change when gaseous bromine condenses to a liquid, so Br2 gas condensing to Br2 liquid. The gas... I mean, sorry, starting with the products. The liquid bromine uh, is, is its natural state of bromine, so it's going to be a zero. Subtract out the delta HF naught of the uh, reactants, which is a positive 30.70, and so you end up with negative 30.70 kilojoules. And so write the chemical equations. That was all this part right here. And then remember, again, these numbers came from pages uh, A21 to A24 in the back of your book. If you have any questions, ask them in class tomorrow or the day after or whenever, um, and we'll go over them. But other than that, we're just going to spend class time working out practice problems.